Nimrod and on Babylon, and really to get a, a good understanding of what took place in Nimrod or in Babylon. And 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 Nimrod is a central figure uh, to something that happened in the Old Testament that is still going on today. But he was a tool that was used by the devil, and we need to understand what exactly he was used for, and uh, how that affects us even today. Now, I won't be able to unveil all of that to you tonight because there's too much of it. There, it's just, this is just going to be kind of an overview. It's an overview of everything. And, uh, but we will get into details of spiritual Babylon and what, what has taken place and how that, that will take root and, and, and what, how that will affect in the future. Uh, in, in the future, in Revelation, the Bible talks about Babylon and and uh, how it affected in the past, and you know just what happened and why this rebellion and and Nimrod's name actually means rebellion. It means rebellion to God is what it means or rebellion, in other words. Uh, and that that's what his name really means. But but anyway, let's pray and then we'll we'll kind of get into it here, Father. I pray that you'd bless us now. I pray, Lord, that you'd please would help us to understand uh, just how significant this really is in order to, to, to understand some of the spiritual applications of things and why some things happened that did happen. Lord, I pray you'd help us to understand that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So uh, we understand in Genesis chapter 9, God blessed Noah and his sons, right? Now Canaan had a curse put upon him, but Canaan was one of the sons of Ham. Now Ham doesn't have a curse on him. Some people believe that the whole Hamite, uh, the whole Hamite uh, family had a curse on them. They did not. That's not accurate. It says that Canaan had the curse put on him. But however, uh, Canaan is not, or Nimrod was not from, Nimrod was not from uh, Canaan. He, he wasn't from him. He, he wasn't part of Canaan, uh, the, the Canaanites, so to speak. He was a different group altogether. And the Bible really talks about him. And I want you to turn to Genesis chapter 10 and verse number 9. Actually, verse number 7 we can start with. Well, 6 would be more appropriate, actually. Actually, <laughs> we, could even, we could even go up uh, uh, a little bit farther. But anyway, uh, we'll go with 6. And the sons of Ham were Cush, Mizram, Phut, and Canaan. And the sons of Cush were Seba, Havilah, Sabta, Rama, Sabteca, and the sons of Rama, Sheba, and Dedan. Now, notice this, though. I find it fascinating. There's a separate entry for one of Cush's sons. Don't you find that weird that the rest of them are all listed up above, but then there's a separate entry for him? And it says, And Cush begat Nimrod, he began to be a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, and Erech, and Akkad, and Kalna, and the land of Shinar. Out of that land went forth Asher, and built at Nineveh, and the city Rehoboth, and Kala. Now anyway, he talks about, about what came forth out of there. Asher left there, he took off there. But what's the significance here of Nimrod? Well, we're going to see that, that in Genesis chapter 10, 10 stands for dominion. It stands for dominion over and, 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 uh, and um, a completion, a power uh, that is there. And Nimrod is the central power figure right here. He is actually the central power figure. At this time, he is the central power figure of the whole world. Uh, at that, and remember now, the whole world at that point, as far as population goes, they're all right there. They're all very close together within probably a five or six hundred mile radius at the most, even, it, you know, they're, they're not that far apart, right? Um, now, what did God tell them? Let's back up a little bit. What did God say to them? God said, God said to, uh, to Noah to be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth. He told, he told the sons to, to be fruitful and to multiply and replenish the earth. So they were to spread out and they were to replenish the earth. They were to start families, they were to, they were to build and, and, and everything else. That's what they were supposed to do. However, Nimrod had a different idea. Nimrod had a few ideas. 
One of Nimrod's ideas, one of Nimrod's plans here, uh, it says that Cush begat Nimrod, he began to be a mighty one in the earth. Now that word mighty is very interesting. I don't, I don't go to Hebrew very often or anything like that. But the one thing that that word does stand for is gabor, which means giant. Uh, some people speculate as to far as what that means uh, as in, in relation to Nimrod. What does that mean? There are some people that believe that Nimrod actually had some... Uh, uh, some genetic altering done or something, or, or even Martin Luther says that he believes, not that Luther's an author, authority or anything, but L Martin Luther actually said, uh, I was reading some of his notes that he had talked about, he said he, that, that, that it's possible that Nimrod could have been an illegitimate child because he's listed separate in the genealogies for some reason, and it's kind of odd. And it is kind of odd because usually all the sons are listed together. It's usually not separated apart. So obviously there was something about Nimrod uh, that was different. And uh, one of these things is, is that he became a mighty hunter. He, became a, he began to be a mighty one in the earth. That means that he stood head and shoulders, so to speak, over everybody else. That doesn't mean just height. I'm speaking of in military prowess. He, he did some things. And he started something that was different in the world. Now remember, the flood had just taken place. This Nimrod's kingdom of Babel was only a hundred years removed from the flood when God destroyed it. Or well, actually when God stopped it. I don't want to say he didn't really destroy it, he stopped it. Uh, it has yet to be fulfilled. The rest of it will be fulfilled in the end times. However, he stopped it, he put a stop on it. But when he did, do you realize that was only a hundred years after they stepped off of the boat? They didn't get very far, did they? They were told to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Well, Nimrod had a different idea in mind. He started to gather people. He started to do some gathering. He became a mighty one in the earth. There are some people that speculate to say in historical records uh, says that, that he first started hunting animals because one of the problems they said that Babylon had or Babel had at the time, that area had, was that the wild animals would run around. Now, Isaiah talks about some wild animals that ran around in Babylon. However, it is said that Nimrod possibly started his career out as an animal hunter, and he could kill these animals, and he knew how to protect against them. He knew how to kill them, and that that's how his career actually started, where he started to become popular, and he, and he started to become a mighty one. But in this instance, it goes on further to say that if he was a mighty hunter before the Lord, which means that he shook his fist, before God. And he became an enemy of God. He became a mighty hunter before God. And which means that he put himself before God. And he disobeyed God. He stood in direct rebellion to what God had wanted him to do. So that's what Nimrod was doing. That's what his plan was. Now, now we see that, that all of this is laid out. All of this is laid out here in, in Genesis chapter 10 in the genealogies of, of what took place there at that time because something was different. Now, Nimrod is not mentioned again until we get over to Genesis chapter 11. Then Nimrod is mentioned again. And this is, this is the overview that we're going to kind of do some comparisons tonight. Excuse me, and look at, and look at exactly what, what happened there. So Genesis chapter 11 and verse number 1, And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick, and burn them thoroughly. thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. So anybody notice some things about that? They were in direct rebellion to God. They were led, in that kingdom at that time was Babel, and it was led by Nimrod. And he was leading a rebellion against God. Now, I'm going to illustrate later why I believe really and expound on why, in later sermons, why he really did that. 
what his goal was. But needless to say, much of history states that Nimrod was avenging his forefathers who had died in the flood. They too had rebellion against God, and God wiped them all out and destroyed them. Now, uh, but anyway, he led this rebellion. The whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And they had a plan. Their plan was to take that city and they build a tower. Let us build a tower. Now that tower has a twofold meaning to it, okay? The, the tower is more than just one thing. Uh, it is a symbol of something. It was, a, it was a design that they had. They were doing something with that. That was part of their... By the way, you may not know this, but Babylon, besides or Babel, the original meaning of Babel, uh, until God confounded their languages, uh, the original meaning of that is the gate of the gods. It's called the gate. It was called the gate of the gods. That area was called that. That's the that's the ancient meaning of Babel was the gate of the gods. So that's remember that. Okay, file that one away. The gate of the gods because that's going to come back in. Uh, that's going to come back in. Now remember. We said that uh, the Bible talks about go uh, gods and fallen angels and all of those things, okay? That those, those were like gods to man, okay? The sons of God, the daughters of men, things like that of that nature. So they were, so the Bible, but the Bible talks about false gods, which they were worshipped, which is Moloch and others are worshipped as, as gods. And uh, there's something to that here as well, but we don't have time to go into that tonight. We're just going to do an overview here tonight. And they said, so, so they had their plan. And the Lord came down, and the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. Do you understand that God himself came down to look at what they had done? Think about this. They were a hundred years from the flood. A hundred years. God had already flooded the earth and destroyed every living creature besides the, the families that went on the ark and those that, the, the animals that could swim. God had destroyed everything. Now, now, God sees that they disobey Him and they're in rebellion to Him. So God comes down to look at their rebellion, to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. You know, there's that word imagined again. If you go back into Genesis chapter 6, go there. Go back to Genesis chapter 6. In verse number 5, he says this, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. There's that word imaginations again. See that? He said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. And it, so the Bible says it grieved him at his heart. It also says here, The earth was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me. So God was going to destroy the earth. And he did. But what did he destroy it for? He also said there was some conspiracy going on there with the sons of God, the daughters of men. But God destroyed the earth. Why? Because the wicked imaginations of man, his wicked heart, his wicked thoughts that he had. And God said he's only evil continually. So then we move forward here where God comes down. The Lord said, Behold, the people is gone. Uh, the people are, is one. And they have all one language. And this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. So when you have everyone in the world 
being able to do whatever they want to be able to communicate perfectly one with another, what's going to happen? They could do some pretty awful things, can't they? I mean, they can start they can start a one world government, huh? Yeah, they could start a one world government. Because that's exactly what Nimrod did. Now, we're not going to really get into that tonight, but I'm going to get into that uh, in the coming sermons. But they started a one-world government. Nimrod ruled the world at that time. He ran it. He had a government that was set up, and he ran the world. But you know what else they had? They had a one-world religion, too. Their religion was not the religion of the Bible. Their religion was not the religion of Shem. In fact, Nimrod usurped the authority and usurped the priesthood from Shem and created his own religion. Go to, let us go down, God said. So he's seen their imagination. He's seen what they had done. He said, nothing will be restrained from them. If I don't stop them now, nothing will stop them. If I don't intervene. Do you realize what would have happened if God didn't intervene? Yeah. You want me to tell you what it was? Exactly what you're going to see in Revelation. Exactly what you're going to see. Listen to me, friend. God stopped it from happening then because it wasn't the time. He's not. When he stops it again, when he stops it again, it will be in the end. Because the Antichrist will come. Notice this. Watch this now. God comes down to stop them, correct? The first time he stops them. When Jesus came down the first time, all right, he didn't, he didn't annihilate them. What happens when he comes the second time and the Antichrist is here? Nimrod, who is a type of the Antichrist, by the way, some say is the Antichrist, will be reborn the Antichrist. Some believe that. I won't get into that tonight, but it, it is an interesting study, and I'll show you what they say about that. Uh, when we see the DNA, when we see what cloning is doing, when we see what they're admitting to being able to do, when we see that the devil or the beast is given power to give life under the image, right? So, see, there, there's, there's a lot there. And the Lord said, Behold, all the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. So God's going to come down and take care of it. And he's going to destroy Satan and the Antichrist and the false prophet. He's going to destroy them with the brightness of his coming. He's going to destroy them with the words of his mouth. God's word is going to destroy them. So what happened here at Babel? And the Lord said, Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So he went down there, and he messed their all, they, he changed all their dialects, all their languages. So guess what? They couldn't continue to do what they were doing. They couldn't continue to build what they were building. They couldn't continue all in their false religion. However, understand this, they all couldn't corroborate with the same religion any longer. What's, what's happening now, though? Men are being able to speak every language, being able to communicate with every language now. We can translate Bibles into every language, practically. We have computer programs that can change language and speech modifications so you can understand things. How about this? How about dragon speech? You ever heard of that? You ever heard of that dragon where you where you speak into it? It's called the dragon, and it'll it'll uh, it'll it'll uh, or dragon dictation, dragon dictation. It'll dictate for you. It's a program that'll dictate. I don't have time to get into that, but there's 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 more to that than what you might realize. It's for a reason. Why? To knock down all the barriers to return us to a time where that Antichrist will be able to have a one-world religion and a one-world government. He will have both of those. He will fulfill Nimrod's 
dream, which is actually Satan's dream. But he will fulfill that, and he will be the end time one that is able to do all that. He'll be able. He won't be. God won't intervene until the end. Then, like he did now, God won't intervene until it's all over. Until he's ready to end it. Until they go through much tribulation. Until many people have to turn to Christ. Till there's a remnant that is saved. All those things. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth. And they left off to build the city. You know, I think that's fascinating. It doesn't say that the city was destroyed. It doesn't say that it was ended completely. What does it say? It says, and they left off to build the city. What does that mean? That city's going to be built again. They just left off, that's all. Satan's plan hasn't changed. He's got the same plan. But, you know, I find it interesting that, did you know that during this time period, during this, this time period, you see another man that comes on the scene. This is the exact same place and the exact same time. But most people don't understand biblical chronology, and they don't look to see this. But I want you to turn over to, to Genesis chapter 12, because I want to show you a comparison here. I want to read you something. That's why this, this Bible is perfect. Amen. The Bible has the answer. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. Are you listening? This is a fascinating comparison. And I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So Abraham depart, Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. And okay, I want you to I want to, I want to stop there for a second because I want you to look at that. I want you to look how it's absolutely amazing. Now I want you to flip, hold, put your finger there, and I want you to flip back over to 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 uh, Genesis chapter 11 and the first four or five verses that are there. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go to let us build us a city and a tower. Look at the language. Whose top may reach unto heaven. Now, without going too deep into this, because we'll save it for another time when we get to Babylon's religion, I want you to think about this for a second. This is what man's works will get you. When you leave God out of everything, there's no hope. They said that they would build a top that may reach heaven. Why? Well, because you have to understand who was in charge of Babylon besides Nimrod, the satanic spirit behind it. It was Lucifer. And the one thing that Satan wanted was he wants to ascend above the stars of God. He wants to place his throne above the Most High. He wants to be like the Most High. He wants to work his way to be there. He wants to teach man that they can ascend. What did he say to Eve? What, what was it that he said to Eve? The same trick that he said to Eve. Yea, hath God said? Come on, Eve. You'll be as gods. You'll be as gods. Now, I believe that there was a bridge that the, or a tower that they were building here, but I also believe it's the Bible's, or that, that history says the definition of Babel is uh, obviously, we understand the confounding language, but it also is the gates of the gods. There's something more to that, and and I'm going to show you that in a second here. And they said so anyway. So they said that we listen to this. Look what they said. 
Go to let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven, and let us make a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Now flip back. What did God say to, to, to Abraham? Do you understand that Abram was right there? Abram was in Ur of the Chaldees. That is a province of Babylon. He was right there in the kingdom of Nimrod. If you don't think that Nimrod didn't know him, Nimrod knew him. Nimrod knew him quite well. But God was looking for somebody who would be obedient. Because the whole province of Babylon had stuck there and nobody left. And all the people were being attracted to Babylon. So what did God want? Obedience. You know that's what God always wants is obedience. Do you know that if you obey Him, He'll give you the desires of your heart and He'll change the desires of your heart into what honors Him? But do you realize that if you follow Him and you obey Him, this is so simple, it stinks! Because we don't get it. Simple. Very simple. What did he say to him? He said, Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred. What was he telling you? You get out of Ur of the Chaldees. You get out of Babylon. Get out. Get out of Babylon. You know, incidentally, that's the call of God to all of his people. Come out of her, my people. Be not a partaker of her evil deeds. Called out of Babylon. Every believer is called out of Babylon. Amen? Called out of this wicked world system. Called away from it. But you know what he said? He said, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house. There's a lot being said right there, isn't there? Want to know what it is? Look at it. Get thee from thy, out of thy country. Really? I mean... America is a cesspool of sin. But we have so many people that want to hold on to the American flag and shake it around and live for it and be patriotic. That's not what God told Abraham, though, is it? It's a good spiritual lesson for you and I to get ourselves out of... Don't get st- I'm, I'm not saying you're not to stand up for what's right or anything like that or, or for liberty. What I'm saying is that it shouldn't have a hold on you. Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred. You know, there's, you know, there, there's a time here. It says, and from thy father's house. The gospel is a sword. It's a sword. And the sword of the gospel, you know what it does? It separates. It separates between man, a father, and a son, a son-in-law and a daughter-in-law. Amen? It separates. Doctrine separates. Strong Bible separates. Amen. What did God tell him? Get thee from thy kindred and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. What is that? That's you and I. That's that's our road to heaven right there. That's, That's our life. That's the blessed life here that we're to live in Christ. That's the land. Because everything else is Babylon, folks. Everything else is ruled by the Antichrist. And we're we're in his provinces, so to speak. And he's the God of the and the God of this world. And we're 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 trying to operate and come out from among that system. But notice what he says here. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great. Wait a minute. Isn't that what these people wanted in Babylon? Yeah. You know what's really sad? These people in Babylon fell for the age-old lie of the devil. Ye shall be as gods. And what did he say? What did they say? They said, go to let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven and let us make us a name. Let us make us a name. We'll make a name for ourselves. What did God say to Abraham? No, get thee out of thy thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father. Get out of Babylon. 
You want a name? Get out of Babylon. I'll give you a new name, Abraham. Abram, I'll give you a new name. But get thee out of Babylon. Get out of there. God called him out of Babylon. That's where he was. Ur of the Chaldees is Babylon. Look it up. It's easy. It's one of the provinces of Babylon. It's very easy to see. It's exactly where it is, and he called them out of it. See, I, I never. I had to study this myself because I never had a Bible teacher tell me, hey, Abraham was in, in Babylon. I never heard it before. Just didn't. Didn't hear it before. It makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? You have the promise right here. You have Satan trying to bless these people here in Babel. And God is right there. Do you understand how close it always is like that? Do you understand that there's always Satan's seed and there's God's seed and God promised they'd be, there'd be enmity, but it would they'd go right along with it, right alongside each other till the end. They would all and, and you know what? Satan is so close. So close to the truth, isn't he? Hey, you'll give you have a great name. So Nimrod who was satanic, which we'll look at at another time, he was led by that. And Nimrod, he, he, had, he had that power. He was filled with the devil, and he wanted that power. He wanted the power, and he wanted to rule the world. But what did God say to Abraham? Listen, remember, they were all one language. All one language, all one religion, all one thing. But what did God say? And they all would, what they want? They wanted to build a big one world government, a big one world religion. That's what they wanted to build. What did God say, though? He said, Abraham, if you obey me, he said, I'll make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Look at that. Are you, are you a family of the earth? Yeah. Why? 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 Because it was according to the promise. Do you understand that? It was according to the promise. Christ, the seed of Abraham, from the seed of Abraham, right? Through Abraham, from Isaac on down the line, the promised Messiah. So what was Nimrod doing? Well, we're not going to talk about that tonight yet. But Nimrod... Nimrod had a God complex. Nimrod was making everybody think that he was God, that he was the Messiah. Sound familiar? Yeah, they have a whole religious scheme that he had there. And incidentally, that scheme went throughout all the nationalities in the world. Why? Because when God confounded their language, guess what happened? That worship that they had in Babel ended up being what worship? Satanic. And it was in every nationality. It was in every, every dialect. There's a story of Nimrod or Gilgamesh or a lot of the weird names I can't pronounce in every dialect. Why? Incidentally, there's a story of Noah in every language. Now, why? In every nationality, why? Every group, ethnic group, why? Because they all come from the same place, that's why. And God had mercy on them. He gave them two chances before he sent the Gentiles out. Before he sent them all out, he gave them two chances. Go to, let us go down and confound their, their confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth. And they left off building the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth. And from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. So then he gets into the lineage of Shem right after that. However, remember I told you that, 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 that the Bible, uh, or that, the, that, that, um, that the, the name also means the, the gate of the gods. I want you to turn to Revelation chapter 18. And we'll expound on Revelation chapter 18, this text, in another date, not tonight.
Do you see how there was a promise given there, though? Do you see how, uh, out of obedience, by faith, Abraham, by faith, Abraham left his country? By faith, Abraham left and took off? He didn't stay there. He left by faith. What happened? He was blessed. He was blessed because he left. Revelation chapter 18, And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily saying, with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils. You see that? The habitation of devils. And the hold of every foul spirit. Babylon? the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put that in a nutshell for you. There's a whole lot of satanic, wicked, spiritual, devilish stuff going on. Okay, That's what he's saying. That's what Babylon was and will be. The religion is not new on Babel. It's not new. It's old. It says here, For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication. That's what's going to happen in the end. Now, it's already there to seduce. But there's a spiritual Babylon, and there's a, there's a physical Babylon. There's a spirit behind Babylon, which we'll talk about. But if you notice that, that's the cage of every of every unclean unclean spirit or foul spirit and the cage of every, what does it say, the hold of every foul bird or every, uh, what's that say, brother, are you right there? Right, the cage, say that again. Yeah, yeah, and, the, and, and, and foul spirits. Okay, what are those? Those are devils. Those are sons of, those are fallen angels is what they are. Now, I find it fascinating also, did you know where Babylon, do you understand where Babylon was built? It was built on the Euphrates. Okay, it was built right on the Euphrates. Now, the interesting thing about that is, is that if you look in Scripture in the end times in Revelation, God says one of the, one of the, one of the seals is broken, I think it's a seal, and, he, and it's broken and he says, release the four angels that are bound in the river Euphrates. So angels are bound because of punishment. Uh, now, I happen to believe that those angels are they're being bound and Babylon right there on the Euphrates has something to do with it. Kind of like what this text is saying in Revelation chapter 18. The, the cage of every you know, uh, unclean bird and the, and the foul spirits. And the hold of every foul spirit. Holding them there for what purpose? Until the day they're released. Now, there's more that can be added to that, but I'm not going to get into that part of it tonight. But anyway, so what we see, what we see here, as we compare it, we see God getting ready to do a mighty work. We see Babylon, the kingdom of the world, at this time. And God, see, they, they were supposed to spread out. They weren't supposed to stay there. They were supposed to spread out, so God confounded their languages so they couldn't talk to one another, and they couldn't communicate with one another, so they would have to spread. And it left off the work that they were doing. Now, how long has it taken for them to catch back up? You see the thousands of years it's taking to catch back up because of the language barriers? Do you understand that? We are approaching a one-world government now and a one-world religion now. We're approaching that. But you have to understand its history and its roots go back, obviously, to Genesis chapter 3, but it goes back to Babylon because that's where it started. That's where that first government, imagine this, 100 years outside of that, they come off of the boat and Nimrod says, well, I'm just going to be a king, and he gathered people together there and they built the city and the tower. They built both. What happened? God judged them for it. Now, what's going to happen in the end times when the one world religion comes in? 
and the one world government comes in, after those days of tribulation, what's going to happen? What's God going to do? He's going to come back and he's going to destroy Babylon. In Revelation chapter 18, we see that Babylon is going to be destroyed. Babylon, mystery. The mother of all harlots. That mother of all harlots is what? The mother of all false doctrines. The mother of all perversions. This will cause them to fall in the end. But it, not before it seduces the whole world. Nimrod tried to get it done right there. Nimrod wanted to do it then and get it over with. He wanted Babel to be, to be the kingdom of the world, and it was at that time, but God said, no, it's not time yet. See, Satan was working with him for his plan. But it didn't work because it wasn't the right time. So there's more, there's more there than that, and we'll get to it here in, in a later date. We'll look at we'll look at it. Maybe Sunday we'll we'll kind of delve into this a little bit more and study out that spirit of Babylon that's behind it and the work that was going on there. And what what, what were they really doing? Why was God uh, honestly? Let me ask you a question. Do you think it's as simple as well? They just built a city and and uh, and God just got mad at him for building a city because God likes the country. I mean, do you think that's what it was? He just oh yeah, God likes the country, so he just started kid he confounded all their languages no well okay what what was the deal with the tower then i mean big deal they built a tower come on what's the big deal well it's just a tower what's let's well no cuz we have certain monuments today that are built for a purpose and they are always built for a purpose always and there's the, the mystery is in the measurements. The mystery is hidden inside of why they built it for the reason it was built. But we see those things all over the world. We see them everywhere. We see different monuments and different things like that that are built, and there's a reason for it, and there's something behind it. Now, what were they doing, and, and why is Babylon the cage of every, of every uh, unclean bird and the, and, and the foul spirits? Why? What went on there? What were they teaching there? What did they teach every culture? And why, why, why were they so rebellious to God? Why was, there, why was this rebellion so important that God came down to stop it? He, just, he came down to stop it. And he did stop it. He, he stopped the production of it. Cold. The spiritual as well as the physical. That was going on there. He stopped it. There's a reason for it. There's a reason he stopped it. And there's a future prophecy on Babylon. It's not over yet. There's some scripture that tells of, of just some of the creatures and some other things that were in Babylon. For instance, it talks about the satyr, the satyr that was in Babylon and, and the owl and some of the other things that were going on, these unclean spirits and, and all these other things that were going on. Then move forward and think about this. Think about Nebuchadnezzar and Babylon. Why is it that Nebuchadnezzar was the king of Babylon and God allowed him to what? Rule the whole world. Isn't that something? Doesn't that, doesn't that, shouldn't that, Nebuchadnezzar was, was definitely a type of that Antichrist as well. Um, now some believe that Nebuchadnezzar got saved. I won't deny that. It looks like he did. But his goal and his intentions was to rule the world. And God gave him that. Do you understand? Now let me ask you this. Do you, under, do you understand that the devil or that, that the Antichrist will be allowed to do what he does in the end times because God gives him that power to do it? Yeah. God gives him that power to do that. So what does Babylon have to do with that? And what was going on in Babylon and Nebuchadnezzar's time? And where did their religion come from? Why did Nebuchadnezzar and Babylon, why did they have all these false gods? And why were they worshiping? And why did he build a tower? Why did Nebuchadnezzar build an image? What was that all about? Well, we're going to look at that. We're going to show, we're going to show what that was about and how that has to do with the end times as well. Why that all matters, why it all comes together and it means something. It has something to do with the future spirit. What does Jezebel have to do with it? What, is, what does the spirit of Jezebel have to do with that? It, it kind of, what, what's, what, what is it with this, this mother of harlots? Why is Babylon called the mother of harlots? 
What does that mean exactly? You know, is that physically? Is that spiritually? Well, it is spiritually. But by the way, one thing I have found, whether, wherever there's spiritual fornication, there's probably physical as well. So, I mean, it, it's not that far off. Um, amen. That's, that's just that's the truth of the matter. It seems as if, anyway. But anyway, what, what, what was the deal with that? What's the deal with the mother of all harlots? And, and, and what does that mean exactly? How does that relate today? And how does that relate to what's coming? We're going to look at all those things. I think Babylon, I think Nimrod, we haven't even scratched the surface of really who Nimrod is. I'm going to teach you some things about who Nimrod is. Now, some of it will be historical, but also we'll look at the context of who he was and how he was able to do what he did. And there's some clues in the scriptures, but also in history as well. Now, we know history is not scripture, but when it doesn't disagree with scripture, and scripture says, yeah, this guy was pretty a bad guy, and and and. He must have been pretty bad because God came down and said, I'm going to end his kingdom, I'm, or I'm going to stop his kingdom from ruling the world. He was mighty before the Lord. What does that mean exactly? A mighty hunter. He became a mighty one, it says in Chronicles. It says it again. His genealogy is listed separately. There's some things about him. What happened there? What is the spirit that was there? Why did, why did it blow up the way it did? We're going to look at all those things and try to go through Babylon and see. There's so many things there. But you just remember one thing. If you want, you know, there's so many people that want to be great in the earth and they want to have something of God. There's so many men that are out there seeking their own fame. You know, God said that he'll give you a name if you'll have faith in him. If you'll turn to him. God said that he would bless them. He would bless you if you would turn to him. If you would obey him. Blessings come through obedience. They just do. They come through obedience. When you obey, you get blessed. When you don't obey God, you can't expect a blessing. Amen? You might ask for mercy, but you sure can't expect a blessing when you're not willing to obey God. You and I have to be willing to obey God. We have to follow Him. Just like Abraham did. That's a life of faith. Abraham didn't have a life of works. He had a life of faith. And his works were fruit of that. They were, his works were a manifested fruit of his faith. Amen. They were the fruit of it. They were the, 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 the result of it. Some people, they, you know, you want some things from God, but when you're acting like Nimrod, how do you expect to get something from God? There's too many Christians out there that are living their lives or profess to be Christians, and they're living like Nimrod, which means rebellion, and they're not living by faith like Abraham. Listen, you've got to come out. You've got to come out of that, that rebellion. You've got to come out of that world system. You've got to come out of that rebellion to God, and you've got to live by faith. And you've got to believe God by faith. And you've got to follow him by faith. And you've got to obey. If you want the blessings of God, you have to obey God. You have to follow him. You know, there's areas in our life where we probably...
thing goes dead all the time. Man. Man, put all the time. Man.